Happy Monday, fourth grade, and I hope that we are all ready for another week of distance learning. Before you watch our next chapter, before you listen to our next chapter, please make sure that you watch the video that I linked in our weekly goal. That video is really important for understanding this week's um, goal and especially for our book club discussions on Thursday. So please head over to that video first and then come meet me back here and listen to the next chapter of rules. If you've already watched it, great, and we are ready to go. So today's chapter is called, If it fits in your mouth, it's food. And that sounds like a rule that she had for her guinea pigs. Tuesday, I bring something to the clinic I've never brought before. Something that means I need to leave the top of my backpack unzipped. And instead of swinging it to my shoulder, I carry it gingerly in my arms. Jason is already there when I arrive, his wheelchair parked next to my usual spot on the couch. Hi, I sit beside him, arranging my backpack on my lap. Thanks for the carrots. Did guinea pig like? They thought they were awesome. In fact, I pull my backpack zipper all the way down. A furry, eager face pops out. What's up? And more to the point, what's for lunch? Pellets? Carrots? Ooh, is that carpeting down there? This is nutmeg, I say, cradling her against my chest. And she says, thanks for the carrots. Nutmeg has chocolate brown whorls of fur, glossy black eyes, and a friendly personality. Of my two guinea pigs, I figured she'd be more tolerant of Jason's sudden movements and noises. Jason's mouth hangs slack. Would you like to pet her? I ask. She might squeal, but she doesn't bite. Awesome. Nutmeg walks across Jason's communication book. She sniffs the air and poops on Van. Sorry. I jump to grab a tissue from the box on the receptionist's desk. Nutmeg, what kind of hello is that? Gross hello. I clean Jason's book. You can say that again. Gross hello. <laughs> Very funny. I reach into the front pocket of my backpack. Speaking of jokes, I made words for you. When I look up, Jason is stro stroking Nutmeg's back with his fingertips. I could see by the clench of Jason's jaw how hard he's struggling to control his movements to not frighten her. When he brings his hand away, he's trembling. I pretend not to notice, afraid it will embarrass him. This first card is joke. I thought you can use this word when you're telling a joke or being sarcastic to make sure the other person knows you're kidding. Like word. And this is whatever. I lean over to whisper. It's good for annoying your mother. At least it has that effect on mine. I demonstrate, swinging my gaze to the ceiling. Whatever. Jason grins. Good job. Whatever. I move Nutmeg over so I could slide the cards, words after word, in Jason's book. And this is secret. I thought sometimes we might want to talk about ev without everyone hearing us. When one of us taps secret, we'll switch to only using your cards. Want to try it? Yes. I look around for something to talk about. Out the window, a man hurries across the parking lot, his beagle on a leash. Do you see that guy? I ask, pointing. Let's imagine who he is. The man dashes past the windows. The beagle trots beside him, heading down, sniffling. Jason taps. Late for dog show. I give Jason a thumbs up. Good job. My turn. I imagine the man and his dog is a perfect spy team, too ordinary to be noticed. But Jason doesn't have spy or secret agent or even mysterious. Searching Jason's book, man is a secret, is the best I can do. I was imagining them a secret agent team, I say finally. Maybe we can talk about music instead? Yes. I pull my CD player from the front pocket of my backpack. This is my favorite CD. Putting the headphones over Jason's ears isn't as awkward as last time, but I still fight the urge to shiver as his hair brushes my fingers and the backs of his hands. My hands. Who? Music. I check his book, but of course there's no card. It's Jason taps. Secret. I clamp my hand over my mouth. Don't speak. Catherine, make word. Who? I don't have a blank card, so I remove goodbye from Jason's book and draw on the back. It's not a great picture of Avril Lavigne, but I'm in a hurry. I don't bother to slide it into Jason's book, just lay the card on top. It's a temporary word and he'll need goodbye more. Jason studies the picture, headphones on, music playing. Avril Lavigne, stupid. What? I startle nutmeg and skittering across Jason's book. Jason grins, joke. I dip my head into my best imitation of mom's nonsense look. You think you're funny, don't you? I lift one side of the headphone so he'll hear me better. My next card is going to say, you big jerk. Secret. I spoke again. I bite my tongue to keep from using it and scan my word choices. 
lifting nutmeg to see what she's sitting on. Jason taps, like Avril Lavigne. Me too, is all I can find to say. Hi, Jason. Jason scowls as I take the headphones off his ears. Speech woman yell all the time, he taps. I can't talk, but I hear fine. Hi, Jason, his therapist repeats louder. How's his day been going, she asks his mother. Jason's hand moves, loud day. What a sweet little animal, the speech therapist says, but what's it doing? I glance at Nutmeg busy chewing the edge of goodbye. I lunge for her. I'm sorry, Jason. He smiles. Odd bye, guinea pig. Watching his therapist push Jason's chair down the hallway, I hold Nutmeg against my chest, stroking her back with my fingertips. Could we stop at the mall on my way home? I ask mom. I need cardstock and a paper cutter. Jason needs so many words. Okay, so that's our chapter. It's a little bit of a short chapter today, but I want to make sure that you're reading your books and thinking about this chapter in the lens of fairness. Reading our books through the lens of fairness. Fairness or unfairness? Was this fair? Was it unfair? And why? So we can apply this to all the chapters that we've read so far, but I just want to look at today's chapter for this uh, video's sake. Now we can look at this in many ways. We can look at it in the lens of the speech therapist and the way that she treats Jason. Every time that she talks to Jason, she raises her voice and speaks really loud. And we see Jason's frustrations in this chapter. And he says to Catherine, she talks so loud, I can't speak, but I can hear just fine. So maybe Jason is seeing this as a little bit of an unfairness, that he's not really being treated fairly just because of his disability. Or maybe we can look at this chapter in the lens of fairness or unfairness when it comes to Catherine and Jason. Catherine feels for Jason and she feels his frustration that the only way he's able to communicate is through the words that he has in his book. So is that unfair for someone to wait for someone else to make a card with a word on it before it can be in, in your vocabulary? I know how frustrated I would feel if I couldn't use a word until somebody wrote it for me. So we can look at it that way too. This week's books club discussion will be about the fairness or unfairness in your books. So today when you're reading and Wednesday, make sure you're really thinking about the issues that your character is facing and whether or not you think they're fair or unfair. And it will really help to talk to your peers on Thursday in our Zoom discussions and get their feedback too. I hope you have a great day and I will see you back here tomorrow.